Hey, welcome back to Stock Talk with Eric Anthony. Um, I hope your day is going well. Happy hump day. Today in the market's my favorite type of day. To me, I, f I found like a lot of my favorite stocks or our favorite stocks, if you keep checking in with me, uh, we're doing a lot of consolidating. And that's always great to see because I feel like the market behavior for the past few months, some may argue the past year, has been extremely volatile. The volatility has just been out, <laughs> just been insane. Like I was saying yesterday, I enjoy those stagnant days because at least it just kind of seems like the market's just taking a, a deep breath, you know? And um, to me, that's always fun to see. For today, I hope to get into a few things, including um, what I learned regarding Airbnb from this conference call, got some updates for ALPP and uh, ABML. I'll also be talking about what we wanna keep in mind as we await the earnings report from Palantir tomorrow. Remember, they will be reporting in the morning. And like I've always told you, I don't usually play earnings. Not saying I usually don't, I never do. But um, it still, as a long-term investor in the company, I, I love hearing what they have to say. Very excited and always, like I've been saying, I always add to my Palantir position. I may be crazy. I may be stupid, we will find out, and hopefully it works out, or I'll have to explain that to the missus. But um, all jokes aside, uh, today, today has actually been a really beautiful day, just to kind of take it, like I said, the market seemed to take a deep breath. I was going to actually re uh, record this video around 10.30, 11 o'clock, and then I had remembered that the Fed was coming out with their minutes from the meeting, so I thought, well... Let me try to kill some time. Been noticing that the beer was getting a little scraggly. So I thought, you know what? Might be a good time to just line this bad boy up and then uh, get back to you with what I had gathered from their report. Another thing I'm gonna touch on today will just be really quick on Shopify. I don't know if, if you guys remember on Monday, I had told you Shopify will be reporting, again, as a long-term investor, there are many companies that I will look out and just kind of see how they're doing, not necessarily because I have a position in them, but more so to see how they influence the market, and more importantly, how they how is that sector gonna influence some of the plays that I do have positions in, such as with Shopify and their connection with the firm, because as many as you know, if you guys are a firm, holders or if you are in tune with what Shopify does in their e-commerce, a firm helps with shop pay. So I will provide you a little update, nothing too crazy. Again, um, the point of this page is to give you guys insight on what things I pay attention to as a long-term investor. And I hope that brings you some value. You know, when I created this page, personally, I thought I was just going to create like a vlog style. I'm still learning. I'm I'm going to definitely dedicate a whole video of just kind of letting you guys know some of the things I've been doing to try to make this video quality a little bit better. But yeah, I thought I was going to do like um, a vlog approach and just kind of let this be my therapy session of how bad life is in the market. It really isn't. But um, I thought I could use this as like an outlet. But since I've created the page, since I created that first video, I wasn't anticipating the market to um, do some of the things that it's done and create such a narrative across the board of YouTube with so many people trying to time the market or become so bearish or just so FUD based with their decision making and just kind of going back and forth. And some of my favorite YouTubers are just like all over the place. So, you know, I was like, you know what? Maybe I'll just kind of make videos to let people know just some real um, up-to-date news that's unbiased and just kind of provides uh, many of us who have our day jobs that don't have the opportunity to be watching the market all day long or be able to get our hands on all these reports that are coming out, monitoring these charts. It's like Epictetus said, you become what you give your attention to. And um, look at look where we're at. Now we have a page that has become something that should have started as a vlog. And now it's hopefully becoming a little bit more educational, which I do hope at the end of the day that this just provides everyone out there some insight on some great companies that have been either overlooked, battered down, or high growth in emerging markets. Okay, so I'm gonna start out with kind of piggybacking off of what I said yesterday. I'm gonna go straight into what I learned, some key takeaways from the conference call 
with Airbnb. Airbnb had their best Q4 in their company history. The length of stays at Airbnb are starting to increase substantially. Nearly 50% of nights booked in Q4 were for stays of a week or plus, and 20% of stays were for a month or longer. This gave a new metric stating that 175,000 guests stayed for three months or longer. Every length of stay on Airbnb is going up, whether it's two nights, three nights a week, a month, or a season, all length of stay are up. And they want to design this for this new world by making it even easier for guests to live on Airbnb for longer extended stays. They are very optimistic about cross-border travel and urban travel rebounding. Prior guests made up 33% of hosts in Q4, and they think this trend will help the supply side of their business, given that their number has been going up in the last few years. They're also making hosting easier. They reduced the number of steps to host. Also, the number one obstacle they heard was hosts being afraid that their homes would be damaged. While now they've launched Air Cover Free for hosts, which includes a $1 million damage protection plus liability insurance. Um, insurance is important. Another interesting tidbit that was revealed is that on traffic, 90% of their traffic remains direct and unpaid. And so this, this is great for any company because now this allows them to put all their focus on brand marketing rather than search engine marketing. And for sites like Airbnb or Verbo or any you know type of place where you're gonna stay, most of their competitors spend their marketing money in search engine marketing rather than brand marketing. So again, that's just something to keep in mind regarding Airbnb. And ultimately for our economy, I think this is fantastic news. Like I said yesterday, as long as, well, yesterday I was assuming if they had provided good guidance and good numbers that this would be favorable for the economy, especially as things start to open up. Um, I don't know if any of you guys live in California, but today we finally have um, first day without masks. And again, with California being a top economy, not just in our country, but the entire world, I'm pretty excited to see where things go now that we start having our economy back up and running. Hopefully everything stays on course, but it looks like things are going in the right direction. With our economy opening up as a whole as a country and Airbnbs, you know, stellar numbers and showing great guidance and only proving that more travels in the future for a lot of us. I think this is great. Just something to look out for if any of you guys are looking to get into these travel plays or these reopening plays back in the market. Um, I might focus a little bit more on what else we consider a reopening play. Let me know in the comments below if there's anything that you guys want me to touch on that I can't, that I haven't touched on just yet. As you can imagine, there's a lot of news out there. So I just want to make sure I kind of give you guys a deep dive on the things that stand out to me. If you ever feel that I've just kind of like breezed over something, again, please, I'm trying to get better at this every day. Just leave me some comments below. Let me know, hey, you could have done a better job of this or you could at least, hey, you completely forgot to talk about this. Anything like that, I'm an open book. Please just let me know below. Revenue for both Q4 and F or and the fiscal year of 2021 were up nearly 80% year over year and exceeded the 2019 levels, demonstrating the strength of Airbnb's recovery. Their gross booking value had a strong recovery in the nights and experiences book combined with higher average daily rates. It drove over $11 billion of gross booking value in Q4 2021. Both Q4 and fiscal year of 2021 saw significant increases in the GBV from a year ago, as well as from pre-COVID periods in 2019. Another big thing, nights and experiences booked, Airbnb saw continued strength in nights and experiences booked in North America, EMEA, and Latin America, all of which have driven significant year-over-year -year growth. Their net income loss was driven by their top-line recovery and continued expenses discipline, and their adjusted EBITDA was positive and are their highest ever for both Q4 and the fiscal year of 2021 due to their revenue growth combined with continued expense discipline. Again, another main takeaway from Airbnb is that I think, and I could be completely wrong, but something that has always interested me with Airbnb is that as you, as I had just mentioned, with their stays becoming increasingly longer, and they're no longer like just looking for a weekend or a one night, which I'm sure is really big. 
But something I want to keep in mind, are they going to enter like the house, the housing market in general? Will they, can they become competition to like an open door or Zillow now that this infrastructure is already pretty global in regard to how they attract customers? You see where they're marketing their money. They can just go to just the branding. And I'm wondering now that people are staying for months at a time or seasons at a time, again, will they become competition to Zillow, Redfin, um, Open Door, and you know, just anything in that space. That's something that's always interested me. Let me know in the comments below if any of you guys think that Airbnb is trying to make a push in the um, real estate area. Okay, so with Shopify, as you can see, Shopify is just getting battered today. At the time of this recording, it was down about 20%, even with favorable numbers. But again, like I've been mentioning, I think for all of 2022, we're gonna be a guidance-based type of earning report season. If your guidance isn't favorable for the future, in the short term, for many companies, the share price will be beaten down. Again, not necessarily because it's a bad business, but because of poor guidance. And as you can see here, the COVID triggered acceleration of e-commerce that spilled into the first half of 2021 in the form of lockdowns and government stimulus will be absent from 2022. And there is caution around inflation and consumer spend near term. Basically, they don't anticipate hyper growth anymore. One takeaway that I thought was pretty exciting, especially as an affirmed long-term holder, was this what they said regarding building buyer relationships. We plan on extending ways for merchants to connect with more buyers, deepen buyer relationships, seamlessly operate their businesses across more channels and offer more memorable shopping experiences while maintaining control of their brand. Channels of focus will include Shop, Shopify POS, and social commerce. Capabilities of focus will include accelerated checkout with ShopPay and ShopPay installments. And remember, Affirm handles ShopPay. So keep that in mind as a, an Affirm shareholder. As I anticipated, if Shopify had poor earnings, Affirm would be um, also be hit the firm is down at the time of this recording just under 4%. SoFi is up 3.5%. PayPal is down just under 4%. And Robinhood is down about 1%. Again, these numbers are really great, but they've, they've kind of um, addressed the elephant in the room that that hyper growth is probably not going to keep moving, especially with things opening up. I think even though e-commerce is huge, and you're not, not going to take away from what Amazon's doing. But in my own personal opinion, we as people like to be social. And if we've all been locked up for a couple of years, they anticipate that a lot of the attention might be going back to shopping in the brick and mortar space rather than just e-commerce space. And I'm wondering what some of these stores are going to do to attract people out from the home and into the shopping. What kind of experiences are you going to get now when you go buy a car, buy a house? when you want to go buy some jewelry, when you want to go buy clothes, I anticipate we're gonna start seeing some new ways of attracting the customer back into the brick and mortar space. Okay, before we hop into the news regard, um, that came out today for ALPP and ABML, just wanna show you how the genomic sector is moving today. As you can see here, pretty stagnant, pretty stagnant. I mean, the biggest runner today is probably 23andMe and PacBio. And by big, I mean up like 3%. With Mount Fang today, Mount Fang was actually down a little bit too. So again, market-wide today, I, kind of, I would just call it a pretty stagnant, consolidating day across the board for the sectors that I like to pay attention to and that's pertinent to my portfolio. All right, so we got some pretty cool news with ALPP. Their subsidiary, ElectJet, has revealed its AX and G-AX class of solid-state batteries. ElectJet has completed its initial demonstration product run of its AX Class 31AH solid state batteries. The company will be distributing these batteries as test samples to various corporations upon request. The AX battery class is a ceramic oxide solid state battery and comes in the form of a 31AH or amp hour solid state battery and a 10 amp hour solid state battery. The AX battery was designed for ultra energy dense applications that need a powerful battery solution, but not necessarily the ultra fast 8C plus charging that the G-AX class batteries can provide. 
both the G-AX and AX use graphene in the battery cells, but for different purposes and at different levels of its battery design. The AX battery class is still quite fast and has operating specifications of up to 4C charging. At a 4C rate of charge, the AX class can charge in 15 minutes. Typical fast charging lithium ion batteries charge between 0.5C and 1C, which equates to one hour at 1C and two hours at 0.5C. The AX class can also retain 80% of its capacity for over 1,000 charging cycles, with up to an incredible 280 WH kilogram energy density, the AX class is the perfect solution for power walls, smaller ESS solutions, golf carts, and EV vehicles. EV vehicles, that matters. That's always attracted me to ALPP. May not be today, may not be a year from now, but boy, when that catches on, that might be something exciting to keep in mind. Production will begin later this year, improving energy density by almost threefold over lithium polymer. With 1,000 charge cycles and the typical range of an electric vehicle being 300 miles, an electric vehicle powered by the AX class of batteries would be able to drive over 300,000 miles before the battery pack would see any significant degradation to its life cycle. Technical specifications show 1,200 charge cycles with 1,000 charge cycles expected for an EV application. The G-AX class consists of graphene enhanced 31 amp hour solid state battery and graphene enhanced 50 amp hour solid state battery designed for ultra fast 8C plus charging solutions for the EV market that need a powerful battery solution while retaining over 80% of its capacity after 1000 charges. At an 8C rate of charge, the G-AX class can charge in under eight minutes the G-8X battery class can be customized up to 50C charging, also having 360 WH slash KG. The G-8X class was designed to be incorporated into a battery stack solution, perfect for EV vehicles in the transportation industry that need to charge quickly. In line with the AX class, an electric vehicle powered by the G-AX class batteries would also be able to drive over 300,000 miles before the battery pack would see any significant degradation to its life cycle. Samuel Gong, president of Electjet, had this to say, what our team of engineers has achieved is a testament to the talented individuals we work with. Unlike the competitors in the solid state space, we are not just building prototypes, we are actually in production and can deliver our batteries I'll say that again, we are not just building prototypes, we are actually in production and can deliver our batteries to companies seeking the solution today. In the near future or in the next coming months, they will be sharing the location of their US-based production facility. Well, I mean, I hope that little roundup right there just gives you an idea of why this is pretty big. Um, ALPP was actually running on this news, nothing too crazy but nonetheless still green. I know that um, having been in this market for a little bit, <clears throat> I remember the days where we would get some good news and the thing would just go straight down. So to get some positive news like that regarding um, their EV play and the battery and how those things can kind of come together, very exciting. And more importantly, it's pretty exciting just to kind of see the market accept this news favorably. ABML announced today that it, it is in the process of staking 90 additional surface sedimentary lithium bearing claims covering approximately 1,800 acres that will expand their Tonopah Flats lithium exploration project in Big Smoky Valley, Nevada to a total of approximately 10,340 acres. As the company further accelerates the commercialization of its internally developed process train for the manufacturing of battery grade lithium hydroxide product from this unique type of lithium bearing surface sedimentary resource as it claims near Tonopah, Nevada, it has initiated the process of exiting its position in the Railroad Valley area and its associated brine claims. The company has sold 224 of their 644 unpatented placer claims in this Western Nevada, Nevada Basin, or Western Nevada Basin.
Basin Basin. You say potato, I say potato. Located in Nye County, Nevada to AmeriWest Lithium Inc., a North American lithium exploration and development company. As part of the company's battery metals resource development exploration efforts, ABTC, also known as ABML, is performing bench scale characterization and extraction trials to confirm the technical and economic feasibility of extracting elemental lithium from their acquired resources in order to produce battery grade lithium hydroxide and other high va value lithium products for sale to the battery metals market. ABTC sale of WNB claims in combination with the expansion of its lithium bearing surface sedimentary claims in Big Smoky Valley follows an evolution in strategy and an emphasis on the sampling and characterization of lithium bearing claystone sedimentary resources in the Tonopah Flats Lithium Exploration Project. If you guys want more information, I'll put the link below so you guys can kind of read deeper into that whole deal. But at the end of the day, it's always nice to hear that some of our favorite companies are securing more land and that they're, that they're only getting bigger and better. So, um, the, the market with this too, just like uh, with what we saw with ALPP, favorable news and favorable market action or favorable price action with the stock. The stock today actually was up uh, just under 4%. Always good to see. And I know for myself personally, it'll be just something that I'll continue to add on over time, not making big splashes with some of these plays. Again, remember, this is an OTC play and the OTC market's like pfft, crazy. It's sometimes you have no volume. And like I said yesterday, when we have no volume, things can go up and down and just like that. So just kind of keep that in mind when we take in consideration some of the plays that are considered over the counter. Speaking about over the counter and usually with our OTC plays, they kind of coincide with penny stocks. Tomorrow's video, I'm gonna do a deeper dive on a penny stock that Warren Buffett just bought. Um, it has to do with crypto, so look out for that video. Um, just kind of piggybacking off of that, at the time of this recording, crypto has been up today, but again, kind of coinciding with, every, with the other sectors that I pay attention to, a pretty stagnant day so far, and just a lot of consolidating. Um, to me, consolidating is always great to see because that just means things are getting tighter and more stabilized at that whatever price that that your stock may be or, you know, that crypto play may be. OK, well, that basically wraps up today in the market for the things that popped out to me. Um, hopefully you have a better, a little bit better insight on how Airbnb is doing and what they expect in the future, how we should look at e-commerce and maybe kind of not forget so much about the brick and mortar space. You have some new information regarding ABML. And ultimately, I think the biggest news today was what, what we got from ALPP and their new battery. Another thing you wanna keep in mind with the new battery is the level of combustibility. Most batteries, if they're punctured, just not this one, not this one. That's something to keep in mind. They've even tested their, these new batteries so that even if it gets punctured, it will continue to hold its voltage and still be able to operate. And so that's always exciting to think about, especially as these start moving into the EV play. I don't know if any of you guys watched the, the Super Bowl, but every other, um, every other commercial had to do with EV or crypto, right? If they're trying to sell EVs, and crypto as heavy as they've been recently, especially how they did with the Super Bowl, as a long-term investor as just a, or as an investor in general, I think it would be advantageous to try to look at those spaces a little bit deeper, um, specifically with lithium batteries. Well, okay, so for tomorrow, again, I will be bringing you um, some pretty cool information regarding Warren Buffett, Warren Buffett and a penny stock, as weird as that sounds. And I will also be discussing what we learn from Palantir and their earnings, and more importantly, what they say regarding to their guidance. So like always, thank you so much for checking in with Stock Talk with Eric Anthony, and I'll see you manana.